The year is 1769. British navigators arrive in the Pacific with the most advanced maritime technology in the world. Sextants that can measure star angles to the minute. Chronometers that keep perfect time. Detailed charts created by the finest European cartographers. Every tool science could provide. Then they meet Maori navigators who cross thousands of miles of open ocean with perfect accuracy using nothing but their minds. No instruments, no charts, no technology of any kind. Just knowledge passed down through generations about how to read the ocean itself. European navigators were baffled. This shouldn't be possible. Navigation required precise measurement and calculation. Yet here were indigenous sailors who could navigate better than Europeans with all their instruments. Let me tell you about the navigation secret that allowed Maori and Polynesian peoples to settle the entire Pacific Ocean, centuries before Europeans could even imagine crossing it. And why this knowledge reveals capabilities of the human mind that we're only now beginning to understand. The secret wasn't in any tool or device, it was in how Maori navigators had learned to use their entire body as a living navigation instrument. They didn't measure the ocean, they felt it. They didn't calculate position. They knew it through direct sensory integration with their environment. This sounds mystical, but it was actually deeply practical. Maori navigators underwent training that fundamentally changed how their brains processed sensory information. They learned to detect patterns that untrained people couldn't perceive and to integrate those patterns into accurate navigation. The training began in childhood. Young students would spend hours lying in shallow water, learning to feel ocean swells. Not just notice them, but understand them. Each swell carried information about distant lands, weather patterns and underwater geography. Master navigators could identify individual swells coming from specific directions, even when dozens of different patterns overlapped. European sailors felt ocean swells as random water movement. Maori navigators felt a detailed map. This wasn't genetic superiority. It was trained perception developed through years of deliberate practice. The star compass was equally sophisticated. European navigation used stars as fixed reference points to be measured with instruments. Maori navigation understood stars as a living, three-dimensional network of relationships that changed throughout the night and year. Master navigators didn't memorize star positions. They understood star paths as interconnected movements. When one star rose, they knew which others would follow and at what intervals. They could track the movement of constellations across the sky without instruments because they'd internalized the entire celestial sphere as a dynamic system. This allowed navigation, even in conditions that would leave European sailors helpless. Cloud cover blocking. Most stars? A master navigator only needed glimpses of a few stars to reconstruct the entire star compass in their mind. Storms making instrument readings impossible. They navigated by feel, integrating information from swells, winds and occasional celestial observations. But the most remarkable aspect was how they used birds. Maori navigators had catalogued the behavior of dozens of bird species, understanding which ones flew how far from land, when they fed, and how their flight patterns changed based on weather and time of day. A European sailor saw birds as random wildlife. A Maori navigator read them like instruments. Certain birds meant land was within specific distances. Their flight direction at dawn and dusk indicated where land was. The types of birds visible told you about the nature of nearby land. High islands versus low atolls. They even used clouds. Different types of clouds formed over different types of land. The colour of the sky at certain times reflected lagoons in versus open ocean. The way light refracted through atmosphere revealed islands below the horizon that no European instrument could detect. This wasn't superstition or lucky guessing. It was systematic observation refined over generations into reliable navigation techniques. When European scientists finally studied these methods seriously, they found that Maori navigators were using real physical phenomena. They just learned to detect them through trained perception rather than instruments. The integration of all these techniques was what made Maori navigation so powerful. They weren't using one method. They were constantly processing information from swells, stars, birds, clouds, water color, and dozens of other environmental cues, synthesizing it all into accurate position awareness. European navigation required stopping to take measurements. Maori navigation was continuous. A master navigator was always navigating. 
always updating their mental model of position based on flowing sensory data. When Europeans tested Maori navigators, the results were humiliating. Challenged to navigate to islands hundreds of miles away without instruments, Maori navigators would arrive with accuracy that matched or exceeded European navigators using full instrumentation. Sometimes they'd correct European charts, pointing out errors in positions that British cartographers had recorded. The most famous test involved a navigation challenge where European and Maori navigators would both attempt to reach a specific small island. The European navigator used all available instruments. The Maori navigator used traditional techniques. Both reached the island, but the Maori navigator arrived first and had maintained more accurate course throughout. This forced European naval authorities to acknowledge something uncomfortable. Indigenous navigation wasn't primitive. It was sophisticated in ways European methods weren't. The Maori had solved problems of ocean navigation through human, capability that Europeans only solved through technology. But what really baffled Europeans was that this wasn't specialized genius. Multiple Maori navigators could perform these feats. It wasn't rare talent, it was teachable skill. Any Maori child trained in traditional navigation methods could eventually achieve capabilities that seemed impossible to European sailors. This revealed something profound about human potential. The limitations Europeans assumed were universal. That humans needed instruments for precise navigation. That certain environmental information was too subtle to detect. That navigation required calculation rather than intuition. These weren't universal limitations. They were limitations of untrained perception. Maori navigators proved that with proper training starting early enough and maintained long enough, human sensory systems could be trained to detect and process information that seemed beyond human capability. The brain could learn to do what instruments do if taught the right way. Modern neuroscience studying traditional navigation has found that master navigators show unusual brain activity. The regions that process sensory information are more developed and more integrated with each other. Their brains had physically changed through training becoming better at the specific type of information processing navigation requires. This wasn't just about navigation. It demonstrated that human brains are far more adaptable than we typically assume. The Maori hadn't been born with special navigation abilities. They developed them through cultural practices that optimized brain function for specific tasks. When European contact disrupted traditional training, these capabilities began to disappear within a generation. Children who didn't undergo the intensive childhood training never developed the perceptual abilities their ancestors had. This proved it wasn't genetic. It was learned, and it required the specific training methods that traditional culture had perfected. Today, there's a movement to revive traditional Maori navigation. Not for practical necessity, modern GPS exists, but because these techniques represent human capabilities that are being lost. Master navigators are teaching young Maori the old methods, not just to preserve culture, but to prove what human perception can achieve. Those who complete traditional training report something remarkable. The ocean stops seeming chaotic and starts seeming legible. They can feel information in swells they never noticed before. They understand star movements that seemed random before. Their sensory world becomes richer, more detailed, more useful for navigation. European sailors who've trained in traditional methods describe it as learning to see the ocean for the first time. Data that was always there but invisible suddenly becomes accessible. It's not mysticism. It's perceptual training revealing information their brains had been filtering out. The Aamiyamki, navigation secret that baffled Europeans, wasn't about special tools or hidden knowledge. It was about human capability. Maori navigators proved that human beings, properly trained, can process environmental information with sophistication that rivals or exceeds technological instruments. This has implications far beyond navigation. If human perception can be trained to this level in one domain, what other capabilities might we be able to develop through proper training? The Maori example suggests that many limitations we consider fixed might actually be limitations of training. The navigators who settled the Pacific Ocean weren't superhuman. They were human beings who had developed specific capabilities through cultural practices designed to maximize relevant brain function. They proved that human potential depends not just on inherent capability, but on how that capability is developed and refined. European technology eventually surpassed traditional navigation in convenience and accessibility. 
but it never surpassed it in the demonstration of what human minds can achieve. The Maori navigators, who baffled Europeans with their capabilities, weren't using mysterious powers. They were using trained perception that most cultures never developed. That's the real secret. Human brains can do extraordinary things if trained the right way from early enough. The Maori navigation tradition proved it. We're only now beginning to understand what their methods revealed about human potential. Sometimes the most advanced capability isn't the newest technology. Sometimes it's understanding how to train human ability to its actual limits rather than accepting cultural limitations as universal ones.